what I want to do. You know, I want to keep on beating him and beat him until he's no longer there. Well, Smith's comments added fuel to the fire of this rivalry and had Cooper extremely irritated during the week. Second quarter, Buckeyes Bobby Hoying rolling left and keeping it himself, diving to the end zone for the touchdown to put the Buckeyes up 9 to nothing. After an interception in the fourth quarter, Eddie George close enough to bang his way in. Michigan was held without a touchdown for the first time since 1985. Buckeyes a winner, 22-6, and for John Cooper, he said it doesn't get any better than this, a win over Michigan. I felt like, hey, I'm going to coach football as hard as I can, do the best job I can. Going into that football game, I had a good feeling because I've done everything I possibly could this week as a head football coach to get this team ready to play. Everybody in that locker room knew one thing. We were ready to go to Columbus to play ball. Now, why we played like that? The Rose Bowl. The only question left for the Lions is, can they get to Pasadena, ranked number one? Northwestern came to Happy Valley yesterday, met the Grim Reaper and that Nittany Lion defense. The first possession, Chad Lilly's fumble picked up by Kim Herring, and he goes 80 yards for the touchdown. The Lions up 7-0 right out of the gate. It was 31-3 in the second quarter when Kajana Carter did his thing. 24 yards for the touchdown. Northwestern backup running back Darnell Autry had 171 yards rushing. The Wildcats rolled up 475, and despite winning 45-17, Penn State may not have impressed poll voters enough. Hey, this game tied at 7? Until later in the second quarter, Larry Jones, a 10-yard touchdown. Jones, Alfred Shipman, and James Stewart combined for 234 yards and four touchdowns. Miami did win it. 38 to 14. Brock Preston again in particular, the freshman untouched to the end zone. Florida State up 14-3 after that run. Second quarter, Danny Cannell didn't have the greatest of games, but was good enough when they needed him to. So was Philip Riley winning the uh, high jump there. FSU up 21-3. 28-3 in the third when Cannell threw his second touchdown pass. But Florida State in this game had nine players leave with injuries, including two with torn knee ligaments, another with a broken leg. Four are now out for the rest of the season. Coach Bobby Bowden said so many went down, he wasn't sure he could name them all. Though Florida State won at 34-3, they'll play Florida next week. And delivered some black eyes. Maurice DeShazo's pitch fumbled by Dwayne Thomas, one of three fumbles lost by the Hokies. It set up a 14-yard run by Tiki Barber. Virginia up 12-0 after that. Fourth quarter now, DeShazo picked off. Five interceptions in the game. This turnover was show me the way. Charles Way with a touchdown. Eight turnovers in the game. And Virginia Tech coach Frank Beamer said his team couldn't beat anyone on the schedule doing that. 42-23, the Cavs still in line for a pretty good bowl game. The day's wildest game, a roller coaster ride between North Carolina and Duke. Fourth quarter, Carolina up by three until Spence Fisher hit Corey, Corey Thomas. The touchdown put Duke up. 38-34, Fisher threw for four touchdowns. Duke had five leads in this game, but lost them all. Especially after Mike Thomas hit Octavius Barnes. Thomas has been great in relief of the injured Jason Stanisek. Over 1,000 yards of offense in this game, but Duke has now lost its last two games by one point each this one. 41-40. He's done all he can do in his quest to become the first 1AA player to win the Heisman Trophy, hitting brother Tim McNair for a touchdown there. McNair did plenty again. Marcus Hinton at the end of this touchdown toss, 533 yards passing, five more touchdowns for McNair, a 52-28 win over Jackson State. Now the NCAA All-Division career leader in total offense will hope his team gets a playoff berth and hope he gets some Heisman votes but despite being a 1AA player. With Rose Bowl hopes, but came out with a number of hopes that got quite dashed. Southern Cal up 6-3 in the second quarter when Rob Johnson hit Keyshawn Johnson, and the touchdown put the Trojans up 12-3, but not so fast. Second half, a different story. Wayne Cook to J.J. Stokes. A flash of what might have been if not for too many injuries. The Southern Cal lead cut to 12-10. Bruins on top 17-12 in the third when Cook did it again, this time to Jim McElroy, who made a great catch in the corner of the end zone. Wayne Cook said this win made his season. 21 points in the third quarter, a fourth straight win for UCLA against Southern Cal. First time that's ever happened in this series, this one, 31-19. This week in our surprise of the week, Chad Johnston hitting Rashawn Vanderpool, West Virginia on top, 14-10. But Boston College did come back. Good game for Mark Hartzell, 320 yards, two touchdowns, including this one to Pete Mitchell, the big tight end, putting BC up 17-14. 20-14 in the fourth quarter when Johnston went to work again. This time finding Zach Abraham for the touchdown that put West Virginia up by one, 21-20. Less than a minute and a half to go. BC fourth and inches, the run stuffed. 
The Eagles finished with just five yards rushing in the game. The Mountaineers have now won five of six after losing four of their first five. This one, 21-20, and our surprise of the week. And Boston Cup 23, the Apple Cup in the great Northwest, Washington State and Washington. Kevin Hicks barreling in a 23-6 win for Washington State. Napoleon Kaufman held it just 66 yards. South Carolina and Clemson in a big one here. And how about South Carolina's Brandon Bennett, the lateral over to Reggie Richardson, and Richardson goes down the left sideline all the way to the six-yard line. South Carolina wins it 33-7. Hey, the Gamecocks are 6-5, and five, might get a bowl. And Harvard-Yale in Boston. This a huge rivalry in the Ivy League. Yale quarterback Chris Hetherington, the touchdown here. Yale, a winner, 32-13. They're now 5-5. Five and five. Harvard, 4-6, and six, their fifth straight losing out throwing finding Todrick Malone a 74 yard touchdown the tide went up 14 nothing in the first quarter second quarter Barker already the winningest quarterback in Alabama history doing it again finding Marcel West the 49 yard touchdown made it 21 nothing Alabama just over two minutes into the second quarter but the second half was all Auburn Patrick Nix on fourth and goal from inside the one the Tigers are on the board cut the lead to 21-7 it was 21-14 38 seconds left fourth down Frank Sanders very close to the first down they brought out the markers and you talk about a game of inches how about a game of millimeters Auburn thought they had the first down. Referees said no. Give the ball back to Bama. Auburn's 21-game unbeaten streak stopped. Their season ends 21-14. Alabama will play Florida in two weeks for the SEC championship at the Georgia Dome. Gators at Vanderbilt yesterday. Danny Werfel to Jack Jackson to make it 7-0 Florida. 17-7 later when freshman Fred Taylor, one of his 15 carries, he had 140 yards in the game. Gators held to their lowest point total of the season, but still good enough for a 24-7 win. In the first quarter, it was Danny O'Neill finding Dino Philaw, and Phil Yaw scored the touchdown to make it 7-0 Ducks. Second quarter, Ducks pinned back in their own end zone, and here come those Beavers blocking the punt. It's a touchdown for Chris Cross. The point after no good, it was 7-6 Oregon. Beavers on top, 13-10 when Danny O'Neill did it again. To Phil Yaw again, the 20-yard touchdown helped the Ducks smell the roses. They won it 17-13, their first Rose Bowl in 37 years, and their first outright Pac-10 title ever for the Ducks house. To ever play at Fresno, where Jim Sweeney huh, was a little upset a couple of times over on the sidelines, but not when Rich Donati hit David Dunn. The 65-yard touchdown put Fresno State up 14-0. The lead would climb to 21 at 24 to 3 before Sonny Lubick's Rams would come charging back. Just over a minute to go in the third quarter when Ray Jackson blocks the punt and scoops it up for the touchdown that put Colorado State up 31-27. Fourth quarter now. Anthony Hill going up top for Paul Turner. Got him the 78-yard touchdown. Helped Sonny Lubick and the Rams get their first WAC title since joining the league in 1968. Lubick said it's going to be a great Thanksgiving if he can dry himself off. They head to the Holiday Bowl, 44-42 winners. BYU played at Utah, and the Utes, Mike McCoy hitting Curtis Marsh here, 57 yards, Utah up 10-0. Fourth quarter, though, the lead changed hands three times in the final six minutes. BYU's John Walsh, he had a big game, 324 yards and four touchdowns, that one to a diving Mike Johnson. But with less than a minute to play, McCoy came up with one of his four touchdown passes to Charlie Brown. And Utah, a winner, 34 to 31. The celebration could still be continuing in Salt Lake City.